So this video is a follow-up to Black Pen Red Pen's video on this channel about one of the coffin problems. If you haven't watched that video yet, I'd recommend checking the link in the description. You can watch through that video and then come back to this one. In Black Pen Red Pen's solution, one of the steps got us to an equation of the form f of x equals f inverse of x. And from there, Black Pen Red Pen made the step that this means that f of x must also be equal to x. Now there were a few people who had questions about this because it seems like there are some cases where this step does not actually work. And one user actually pointed out that if we take the function f of x equals one minus x cubed, and then the inverse of that function would be the cube root of one minus x. In this case, when solving f of x equals f inverse of x, we actually get five different solutions, but only one of them is a solution where f of x equals x. So it seems like this step doesn't work in every case. However, in the specific case of the coffin problem that black pen red pen went through, this step actually is valid. The question is, what about that particular coffin problem made it so that we could set f of x equal to x and get all of the solutions? To understand that, I'm gonna start by changing this equation a little bit. We are going to take f on both sides. If we take f on the left side, that's just gonna leave us with f of f of x. On the right, we're going to get f of f inverse of x. Well, because this is the inverse, f of f inverse just gives us the original argument x back. This is the equation that we're going to investigate right now. I'm going to propose that if our function f is strictly increasing, then the equation f of f of x equals x implies that f of x must equal x. In other words, if our function is strictly increasing, then this equation tells us that f of x must equal x. In order to understand why this is true, we first need to look at the definition of strictly increasing. We say that a function f is strictly increasing if a being greater than b means that f of a must be greater than f of b. So some examples of strictly increasing functions are f of x equals x, f of x equals the square root of x for positive numbers, or in our case, f of x equals x cubed plus one over two. This third function is the one that shows up in the coffin problem. If you wanna see why we say that the function x cubed is strictly increasing, I've left a link in the description to a video by Black Pen Red Pen that goes through that. Given this definition, what we're going to do is plug in a few specific things for a and b. Let's start out like this. What if f of x is greater than x? What we can do from here is take the numbers f of x and x and plug them in to this definition here. If f of x is greater than x and f is strictly increasing, then we know f of this first number here, f of x, must be greater than f of the second number, x. So we know f of f of x must be greater than f of x. On the other hand, we also know right here that f of x must be greater than x. So we can put this right here as well. And by the transitive property of inequalities, this means that f of f of x must also be greater than x as well. And if f of f of x is greater than x, we definitely know that it is not equal to x. So if f of x is greater than x, we've concluded that f of f of x cannot be equal to x. What we're gonna do now is take this same line of reasoning, but do it backwards. So instead, we're going to look at what happens if x is greater than f of x. So we've done the same thing, but we're flipping them around. We can also look at this as f of x is less than x. In that case, we know that f of the first number, f of x, must be greater than f of the second number, f of f of x. 
So now we know that f of x is bigger than f of f of x. But at the same time, we know that x is even bigger than f of x as well. And therefore, x must be greater than f of f of x. And this tells us that definitely x is not equal to f of f of x. So what we see here is that if f of x is greater than x, then this equation cannot be true. If f of x is less than x, this equation cannot be true. And therefore, the only way for this equation to possibly be true, therefore, is that f of x must be equal to x. So from this proof, we've shown that the only way for f of f of x to equal x with a strictly increasing function f is for f of x to equal x as well. So because the function x cubed plus 1 over 2 is strictly increasing, we know that this equation from the Coffin problem question implies that f of x must be equal to x. Those give us all of our solutions. This is the only definition that we need to determine that a function is strictly increasing on its domain. I'm going to give a few examples of functions that are and are not strictly increasing so we can get a better understanding of that. First of all, the function f of x equals negative 1 over x. This function is not strictly increasing over its domain. To see why, we'll look at a graph of this function. Negative 1 over x is going to be increasing like this for x greater than 0, and it's going to be increasing for x less than 0. But if we look at what happens at x equals 0, the function goes from super, super big values up here to super, super big negative values over here. And that means if we take, for example, the point negative 1, 1 and the point 1, negative 1, these do not satisfy the condition for a function to be strictly increasing. We know that 1 is greater than negative 1, and yet when we plug it into the function, suddenly the bigger input gets mapped to a smaller output. And that means this function is not strictly increasing. Now it is possible for a function to be strictly increasing without being continuous. For example, if we take a look at a function that looks something like this, we see that there's a jump discontinuity at this specific input value. But this condition for a function being strictly increasing is still satisfied because the jump discontinuity goes up. So these values, if we pick a point over here and then a point up here, will still satisfy the condition that a bigger input leads to a bigger output. The reason it doesn't work for negative 1 over x is that the discontinuity goes from super big values on the left to super small values on the right. And therefore, the condition for strictly increasing is not satisfied. The last thing I'd like to do is give a really cool visualization of what exactly is going on here. We're going to do that using a diagram that's called a cobweb. So if we have a particular function that we're looking at, say, x cubed plus 1 over 2. What we can do to think about applying the function multiple times is first draw the line y equals x. Then we'll pick a point on the line that we just drew. So say we pick a point right here and we'll call it x, x because we're starting at an input value of x and the y value is the same. From here, we're going to move vertically until we hit our function. We'll have the same input value x, but now our y value has to be f of x since we're on the curve. From here, we're going to move horizontally until we get back to y equals x. Now this point is going to have the same y value, f of x, but its x value must equal its y value. So we're going to have f of x as the input coordinate as well. And then we're going to move up again vertically to the function. Now again, our x value is the same, so we have f of x. But then our y value becomes f of that input f of x. 
And finally, we're gonna move one more time horizontally back onto the line, and that'll get us to the point f of f of x, comma, f of f of x. 3 blue one brown also talked about this a little bit in one of the episodes of the Lockdown Math series. The reason this visualization is useful is because it gets us, in a geometric way, from the point xx to the point f of f of x, comma, f of f of x. Now, if we're trying to solve this equation, we want this point f of f of x over here to equal the point x comma x. In this case, we see that that's not true. However, if we had started at a point where the function intersects y equals x, then all of our vertical and horizontal movements wouldn't move at all because f of x equals x. So our vertical movement would move nowhere and then our horizontal movement would move nowhere and we just stay in the same spot. This is what the diagram looks like for an increasing function. Notice that we step up the first time and then we step up the second time. We could also look at an example. Say we wanted the function y equals 1 half x, like this. If we start at a point xx over here and we go through the same process. First we move vertically, then we move horizontally, then we move vertically, then we move horizontally. Notice this time we stepped down, but we stepped down both times. So for an increasing function, like the ones we see here, if our first step goes up, then our second step also goes up. Over here, if our first step goes down, then our second step also goes down. On the other hand, if we have a function that is not strictly increasing, for example, say we take the function f of x equals negative 1 over x. So it looks something like this. We have our line y equals x. Let's say we start at this point right here. First we're going to move vertically down to the function. Then we move horizontally to the curve y equals x. And then we move vertically to the function. And then we move horizontally to y equals x. Notice what's happened here. We started and ended at the same point even though all of our steps were pretty big. And that's because our first step was down, but our second step was up. And that's because this function is not strictly increasing. This is actually a visualization of the exact same proof that we looked at earlier. In this first case, we see the situation where f of x is greater than x. That's why we're stepping up. If f of x is greater than x, then we're going to put in a bigger input the second time. Because our function is increasing, that means that we're going to go up again. f of f of x must be even bigger than f of x. On the other hand, again we have an increasing function here, but this time f of x is less than x. Because our function is increasing, that means we're putting a smaller input a second time, we're going to get an even smaller output, so we step down again. On the other hand, for a function that's not strictly increasing, we can have a situation where the first step goes down, where f of x is less than x. But when we go back to the input, f of f of x goes back to the same value. And that's because there are points where even though the input is smaller, the output is bigger. And that's why for a function that's not strictly increasing, we can have alternative methods to get to the equation f of f of x equals x. On the other hand, for functions that are strictly increasing, the only way to do that is to start at the intersection point where f of x equals x.